This is going to be a video about how to navigate the drawing and painting classroom. The first thing you should notice is that there are two classrooms you can enter when going through this door. D109 is the drawing and painting classroom and D109A is the ceramics classroom. There are some protocols you will need to follow that may be different than other classes. The first thing you should notice is a bunch of desks and probably large windows toward the back of the room. When you enter the classroom the first time, you'll be asked to find your assigned seat. There may be blue and red dots on the desks that will help signify which desks should be used during specific hours. Another thing you should notice as you enter the classroom is the teacher that's in that space. Your teacher will probably be close to the smart board getting ready to start class. While you will often be asked to open Canvas to participate in class activities, most often you will not need to open Zoom if you are in person. Navigating Canvas will be a different video. The next thing you should see are two whiteboards that have additional important information for students to be aware of when in this classroom. Immediately underneath those whiteboards, there are a bank of computers that can be used to access the Adobe Suite, which is not available on your Chromebook and can be very helpful in adjusting images to work with while you draw or paint. In addition, it is often helpful to print the image you are trying to work with as there are additional techniques that can be used if you are struggling with drawing. As a side note, there are two additional computers attached to the large photo printers in the back of the room. There is also a general printer in the back of the room as well. All computers can print from the D109 color printer. However, the computers in the back of the room will be used one at a time and there are some printing instructions on the wall behind the computers. Most often, larger printing is reserved for the upper level classes for contests and other large projects. Immediately to the right of the photo printers are some hooks that can be used to organize the seating charts for the entire day. Directly behind that is a cabinet that contains bins to organize materials which need to be sanitized daily for classes. We put these items in these bins while working on each project and put them in their permanent storage location when finished with that unit of study. In order to orient you with the rest of the room, we will move in a clockwise direction starting with the smart board and teacher work area. Right in front of where the teacher works from, there is an orange filing cabinet on top of which there are rulers that can be used to assist you in drawing. To the right of that, behind the sanitizing area, there is an organizational cabinet that houses chalk pastels and oil pastels, which are labeled so you can find them easily. On top of that cabinet, there are palette knives, acrylic paint, and pre-mixed small lidded paint containers. Moving clockwise to the right, you will again see the bank of computers. On the wall between the whiteboards, there are some instructions for how to log into desktop computers as those directions are different from logging into your Chromebook. Immediately behind the computers is a closet that houses most of the still life objects, and you can see some extension cords neatly wrapped on the wall to the right. Continuing on to the right, you can see the sink area with student work storage spaces to the right and left. On the left side, painters will store their work. Brushes and smaller individual specific paint containers will be stored in student supplied carriers above those spaces clearly labeled with the student's name. As we continue to look at the sink area, there are several things to notice. Below the counter to the left of the sink are small empty paint containers with lids, paint palettes, large acrylic paint bottles, and gesso to name a few things. On the counter, there are community use paint brushes, both small and tall. Above the sink area, there are liquid watercolor supplies, larger premixed acrylic paint, empty paint containers, and extra paper towel. One important thing to note here is that when we clean up, there can only be one person at the sink at a time. Moving to the right of the sink, you should notice watercolor boards below the counter. Paint rollers, sponges for cleaning, and water containers are on top of the counter. As we continue our tour of the room, you should notice the AP storage areas to the right of the sink and some still life objects stored in labeled boxes above this entire cabinet area. There is also a 3D display case on the right behind the color wheel. Below that area are light tables students can use to trace the shapes of items they may be struggling to draw. 
Continuing clockwise, you can see the classroom door that goes to the hallway and a large cork board for critiquing or analyzing work. As we continue to move to the right, you can see the storage area for the Drawing 1 class. You should notice that there are two rows of drawing spaces and that the ceramics classroom opening is just to the left of this storage area. This storage space also houses newspaper, table easels, mirrors, and additional still life objects below. By now you should have noticed each class has a storage area that is labeled for that class type, as you can see here with the Drawing 1 slots. Immediately to the right of the drawing spaces is a heater that we don't want student work placed on so there is sufficient heat in the room in the winter. Continuing on, you can see a tabletop drying rack area with smock bins and newspaper below. As we continue moving right, you should see a large flat storage cabinet with a bin of empty black boxes used for storing pastels during assignments above it. Immediately across the walkway from there is another, shorter, flat storage area. These areas are where we keep additional examples to illustrate specific techniques during class. While we do have some of these images recorded digitally, some of the detail doesn't always transfer, making seeing these artworks in person so important. Continuing on, you can see several other materials stored in bins on the counter directly behind the additional heater. This space houses things like scissors, masking tape, adhesives, band-aids, as well as Cornell note sheets, transparency sheets, and other drawing materials. Just to the right of that, there is a large white storage bin that houses things like stencils, workable fixative, hot glue, and hand brooms with dustpans. Moving again to the right, there is normally a wheeled whiteboard used for additional instruction. Behind it is a door to the courtyard that we sometimes use to do gesture drawing. As you look up from there, you can see larger drawing boards with clips and the Drawing and Design 2 spaces. There are a few additional storage areas in the Drawing Design 2 area that help house the T-squares used in perspective drawing. This brings us back to the teacher station area where the sanitized items are. This back area also has carts with additional supplies used for drawing and painting because there is not enough space in which to lay everything out in the classroom and have you work at the same time. Not to worry though, we just adapt and make room. Additionally, the larger art supply storage room is in this area, but students are generally not allowed in that area unless helping an instructor. Remember, this area also has the two computers that can print larger. There are directions for larger printing on the wall. If you were to turn around from there and look at the larger classroom, you would see several desks in which students work. There are still life tables in the middle so all students are able to see objects in which to draw or paint. On either walking side of those desks, you should be able to see the black flat storage area and a paper cutter. Here you can see we sometimes place items to give students on these areas or use it as additional still life space so students have a large variety of objects to choose from when drawing or painting. Beneath the paper cutter table, which is across from the sink, there are things like ripped cardboard used for experimental drawing and additional drawing papers. As you look at the desks in the room, you should notice that there are flat black plastic covers rolled up and attached to the back of the desks. This provides a way for students to protect the desk from debris and paint and to make cleanup easier. You just have to release the Velcro attachment that holds the plastic onto the desk and unroll it to cover the desk while you work. Remember, you will be cleaning up and putting your materials in the correct storage area as well as misting your desk with peroxy at the end of the period to eliminate the COVID-19 virus. You have to reattach the Velcro to the back of the desk before you leave and place any items that you need the next day in the sanitize bin. There are some drawing and painting items that cannot get wet, so we will use a sanitation wand for that. Most of those items are dry art media like chalk pastel, oil pastel, charcoal, and Conte crayon. Your instructor will let you know what you can mist with peroxy and what needs to be UV light sanitized. The instructor is the only person that will use the UV light as well. After all materials are put away and everything has been cleaned and sanitized, 
you should go back to your assigned seat and wait for the dismissal bell. Here you can see two students doing just that. Remember, in order to stay open, we have to stay safe. Therefore, following all the classroom rules and cleanup protocols are everyone's responsibility. Last but not least, make sure you sanitize your hands on the way out of the room and wear your mask all day. See you soon!